All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So, in front of me here, I have samples of each of the noble gases. These are the least reactive of all the elements, and they comprise the column on the far right of the periodic table. I have them arranged in increasing atomic weight. So, the members of the noble gas family are, of course, helium, neon, argon, Krypton, Xenon, and Radon. Now unfortunately Radon is very radioactive, decaying in just a few days. And so its sample is represented by this uh, chunk of uranium ore, which has Radon as part of its decay series. So, what am I going to do with all these? Well, I have many things planned. Uh, very low temperature coolant, balloons, neon lights, welding. I used uh, xenon to make frob scottle. But I think today we're going to do something fun, and that is I'm going to breathe in all of these gases to see what it does to my voice. You may already know that helium causes your voice to go all high and squeaky. All right, so as you can see, I have uh, transferred the gases into balloons to make it a little bit easier to you know, work with here. And we can also demonstrate a few of the properties such as density. So the helium, I've got weighed down with these magnets. You can see helium does take off and float because it's much less dense than air. Neon is also less dense than air, uh, but of course I do have this heavy clip on there and there's not very much in this balloon so it doesn't float, but you can see is quite light. Uh, argon is a little bit heavier. It feels like I just filled the balloon with air. Uh, krypton is noticeably heavier. Uh, it, it feels heavy. It's got a little bit more inertia than the argon balloon. But the xenon, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, it almost feels like it's attracted to the ground. It's just so heavy. <laughs> dribble it. <laughs> Let's do the argon and xenon up high. <laughs> you can see the xenon is much heavier and it falls much quicker. So a quick word on safety. I definitely wouldn't recommend breathing in random gases on your own. But the noble gases are very unreactive and they all occur naturally in the air. Uh, argon, for instance, is about 1% of the air's composition. But of course, uh, helium and xenon are much more rare. The main concern with breathing in pure versions of these gases is they do not support uh, respiration. They displace the oxygen and you can suffocate. There is uh, one more concern, however, and that is, uh, especially down here with xenon, maybe krypton, is they actually can dissolve into your blood and interact with your uh, brain chemistry. It has an anesthetic effect, very similar to uh, nitrous oxide, except it's possibly a little bit more powerful. Uh, just in case, I do have Canyon hanging out uh, nearby, and she can always uh, call for help. So, uh, I believe the plan is to uh, breathe the gas, and then I'll say something, and then I will uh, do some breathing to get rid of the gas from my lungs, and then I'll go to the next gas. Uh, what should I say? I'll probably just Hey, all right, everyone, this is helium. That's, that's probably good enough. I'll just say that for each of the words. At least we'll have the all right, everyone, that is the same for each of them. So, here's the helium. So, a good, uh, you guys probably know what's going to happen here. Here it goes. Everyone, this is helium. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, my fingers are dirty. <laughs> Much fun. Okay. Some neon. All right, everyone. This is neon. So it is higher pitched than normal air. But not nearly so much as the helium. 
Okay, <laughs> I started to get tunnel vision there. So it definitely displaces the oxygen. Probably should give myself a little bit longer in between each sample. I'm worried for the xenon. <laughs> Alright. Kangans over there with their phone. Alright. Argon, the one that's normally in the air, most prevalent. All right, everyone, this is Argon. <laughs> a little bit deeper than uh, normal air, I'd say. It just sounds like I'm just a, just a big burly guy. <laughs> okay. Get that out of my lungs so I can get some oxygen. Enough Krypton. I don't remember, was Superman's homeworld named after Krypton or was Krypton named after Superman's homeworld? You know, tell me in the comments. So. Krypton. I don't know if you read it. It's kind of a dark green balloon. Hi right, everyone. This is Krypton. <laughs> I sound like I'm from Krypton. This is great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one was good. <laughs> Okay, you can go fit over. Okay, my hands are a little bit tingly from the Krypton, so I don't know if that's psychosomatic or what. So I might give myself a little bit longer before the Xenon. Alright, it's time for the Xenon. Here he goes. Hi right, everyone, this is Xenon. Oh man, that stuff is heavy and Whew. hard to get out of your lungs. Whew. Oh, my ears are ringing. <laughs> ah. Lips are all going numb. I didn't even get it, all of it in. I'll save that for something else. Whew. <laughs> oh, that, that Xenon hits you hard. <laughs> I think that's the most I've ever had at once. All right. Get that all sealed up. <laughs> oh, not sure it's all out yet. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's shaking. <laughs> there you go, xenon. So, there's the one more gas. It's the radon. So let's just uh, get some of that now. Hi everyone, this is radon. Well, a few atoms of it. <laughs> uh, certainly not enough to change my voice in any way. If I did have enough to alter my voice, the radioactivity of it would absolutely kill me. Uh, and I wouldn't live long enough to get cancer either. Uh, just that the heat generated from its decay would absolutely be enough to just burn everything. I'd probably drown in my own fluids within minutes. And uh, I'm sure there's some of you out there that are like, Oh, but you see, element 118 was also discovered to be in the noble gas group, so unless you have a particle accelerator, you can't have all of them. Yes, that is a noble element, if it follows the periodic trends. Uh, we don't really have enough to have had any experimentally verified chemical properties. Uh, mathematically, we've figured out, though, that it probably wouldn't be a gas at room temperature, assuming you could remove its radioactivity. Uh, it'd probably be a solid, in fact. So, it wouldn't be a noble gas anyway. So, there you go. Uh, if you did gather enough of it together, like a similar number of particles to what I had here with the other gases, uh, and you didn't suppress its radio radioactivity somehow, uh, 
you know, just gather it all together in one spot and you have a little, it's probably like a sugar cube in your hand. Uh, you'd probably look at it and then just see a flash of light and die. <laughs> uh, it's, it's half-life is a few microseconds, I think. And the energy released would be, well, it'd be an atomic bomb. It would form a mushroom cloud and everything. <laughs> so, it's probably not a good idea to do. <laughs> I guess I ought to talk about why uh, my voice went so deep when they breathe in the heavier gases. It has to do with the speed of sound. The larger particles, they don't move as fast, have a slower speed of sound. And the vibrations happen slower, so or faster, depending on the weight of the gas. And that changes the pitch of your voice. So, Incidentally, it works with a whistle, too. In fact, I've, I've done xenon through a whistle. So, I'll, I'll link that video. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. Here it goes. Alright, everyone. This is helium. Alright, everyone. This is neon. Alright, everyone. This is argon. Alright, everyone. This is krypton. Hi right, everyone, this is Xenon. Hi right, everyone, this is a few atoms of radon. <laughs>